The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. Well, howdy everybody. Welcome to East Texas and to P-Bar Whitetails. So this is the second time we featured P-Bar Whitetails on our show, and I'm super excited to be back. Hi, I'm Jody Phillips. We are P-Bar Whitetails. This is my second time on Deer and Wildlife Stories. Since the last time we've been here, we've probably increased our herd by about 130 head and quite a few more deer. The first thing I noticed when I drove up is all the new additions to the farm. What I'm talking about is the one-year-old pen. So Jody and Joe's house sits up on top of the hill overlooking this beautiful side hill. And it doesn't even look like Texas. It looks like it could be Kentucky or Tennessee. It is absolutely breathtaking. And the one-year-old pens that they built on there, they are beautiful. And they're full of big one-year-old bucks. All right, so this is a brand new pen. Yes. I mean, y'all wound up since I was here last time, y'all have really expanded. We and, have. And it looks like you needed to because, are these yearlings? These are yearlings. Holy smokes, Jody. Look at that. So last year when we were out here, these guys were all fawns. Okay. And uh, look at them. I mean, did you have any idea last year, were you expecting this? We were hoping for it. So that deer right there, number 29, who's that? He is Enterprise back on FedEx's sister. Oh wow, talk about strong. No wonder he looks like that. Yeah, he looks really good. Goodness gracious. And then this other guy right here, who is that? What number is he? 81. Yeah, 81. So he's Broker back on Freeze Frame on Jackie. He's actually a half brother to a really good three year old. Okay, we last there. year we were out here, we got Broker footage of Broker. We got to show you Broker. And I mean, but look at that, that is a heck of a deer. So, but he's kind of short tied. So what's the deal with that? He's a cover baby, he's late born. Uh, he just really didn't start putting that on until the last week and a half or so. And he's just blowing us away right now. I yeah, mean, I he's, say, I he's love turned that into, deer. he's really, really caught our eye and, and he has the look and that doe's a staple here, the mom. Okay, the so freeze frame Jackie got girl. We do, we okay, do. So when she talks about a cover baby, what, the, what that means is that every one of these moms out here has been AI'd, okay? And, uh, and when they're artificially inseminated, we know when those babies are gonna be born. Okay? Right. Uh, roughly 196, 200 days are gonna be born, okay? And after that, after these deer are AI'd, they put a cover buck and a cleanup buck, if you will, in with those bred does, in case one's not bred. And so many times, the, the like the, the, what you're saying, this deer could be two months younger than the right. other deer in here and uh, and still look at what he's got. So that's a heck of a deer right there. Right, he is quite a bit younger and he's really just now started growing. He probably has 45 more days worth of growing to him. Okay, right now it is the last of July. And as you can take a look at these guys, you can see that there, many of them are still bulbed up, which indicates that they've got a lot, a lot of blood they're pushing up on the antlers. and. Uh, when we were talking to Jody, she had said she's got a deer that we need to be knocking down. They need to be knocking down today. Uh, and actually doing some antler uh, amputation on, if you will. Uh, they're gonna be cutting some tines off of it. So we're gonna show you that later on. And, and the cool thing about deer breeding is the lifestyle. I mean, yeah, we're doing it for the money, okay? But we also are doing it for the lifestyle. I mean, right. you've got so many yearlings on the ground. We do, And uh, there's and, a lot. <laughs> and when we get back from the break, we're fixing to head over to the two-year-old pen right now and we're gonna show you a two-year-old buck that you're not gonna believe. And we filmed him last year. He was good last year, but I'm telling you, he's gonna blow your mind this year. Jody Phillips is a leader. And what I mean by that is uh, she is an example for others to follow. And uh, you know, she may not be telling people this, but I'm gonna tell you this. For example, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife has got some uh, pretty stringent requirements for the deer breeders in the state of Texas. And Jody took it upon herself. She and Joe wound up did a, a seminar where they got, they invited game wardens. I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of game wardens to come here to P-Bar Whitetails and see what it took to be a deer farmer. And they started from the very beginning. Okay, what do you do when you pick up a fawn? They showed them the process from the beginning all the way through the end. The record keeping, the paperwork, the, the blood, sweat, and tears that goes in to growing deer right here. 
And I think that Jody Phillips didn't have to do that, but Jody Phillips is not an ordinary person. She's extraordinary. She's a leader. And it's for that reason that I respect her and other people in the Texas industry are going to respect that lady like you can't even believe. Jody didn't have to do this to help educate the game boards, but somebody has to educate them. And Jody and Joe gave them first hands-on experience right here. All right, so these are obviously yearlings. I can tell by their body size, but uh, their antlers, I mean, by and large, on average, these antlers are smaller than that first pen of yearlings. Why is that? These are the later born yearlings um, and some of the ones that were just kind of off in the beginning so we segregated and put, pushed them by themselves as we're feeding a little bit different. Okay. Oh you are feeding these different? Yeah they're getting a little bit different ration than everyone else. Okay. There's still some nice ones in yeah, here. There is. So were these, these were not AIs then? I mean most of them. Most of, them. of these are not. Most okay. of these are either live covers or um, yeah, most of these are live covers. Okay, folks, I want to tell you something. Uh, Jody has not been breeding deer for very long. Since when? 15? 2015? 15, yeah. 16. Okay, and you, we're going to show you some deer that are going to blow your mind. And you think, how could a lady be doing this this fast? And the thing is, she is focused on, I mean, we're going to show you some unbelievable bucks. But the reason why she's able to do this, because she is focused on something most guys didn't focus on, focusing on the doe side. And you started focusing on the doe side back we when did. you started. We did. Okay, and it's the it's the focus on the doe side because the does are what's going to produce these monster bucks like this. And uh, I mean, these are some nice yearlings, no question about it. But we're fixing to head on over to the two-year-old pen right now, and you're going to see a buck in there that's going to blow your mind. All right, so this is what uh, a pen of big two-year-olds looks like. And how many you got in here? Around 25. Who in the world is that one right there? That is the man right there. So 917, he's... Yeah, 917. He's really blown us away. He, He's something. Holy Big frame. smokes. He's got it all. How wide is he? I'd say he's close to 30. Yeah, but look, he's got the but look. But his, his, his tines flare out to, I don't know how far that would be, but I'd say his inside spread's close to 30. Okay, and, and again, it is, uh, the, it is the end of July. Okay, so he's still got some growing to do. But take a look at that guy. Now there's some other really nice deer in here. Yeah. I mean, some really nice deer in here, but that particular deer just is head and shoulders above everybody he else is. in my opinion. Holy smokes. Okay, so he was born here. Every deer was he born is. here, right? Yes, every deer was born here. Okay, so. Aside from broker. Now what are your plans with him? We'd like to breed him. Um, that's our and we're going to breed him for sure. Okay. Um, does he have a name yet? He does not have a name. We've been trying to decide okay. on and a so good name. As far as pedigree goes? He's Waylon, back on Express, back on 138, which makes him, back on Brain Freeze's Grand Dam, which, which makes him double dream, double Jake the Dream Buck on bottom side. Okay, so, so tell everybody how important it is for you that you depend upon the North American Deer Registry for everything. For the oh, breeding. for everything. I'm on I'm on the North American Deer Registry every day. Um, it lets me know what other people have as far as breedings and it helps us keep up with our own and, and now, I'm able to compare with, deer. I mean, what a pen of two-year-olds, but that one guy right there, 917, is the man. He is okay. the man. He is now, the man in this pen for sure. Oh yeah, so I, I know you got big plans for him, but what we're going to do, that two-year-old right there, when we get back from the break, that guy is going like that, lopsided. What we're gonna do, we're gonna find the girls that work for Jody, and uh, we're gonna go give him a haircut. And then there was a newborn fawn this morning, and the girls that work for Jody are gonna head on over that pen, and they're gonna show you everything that it takes as a deer breeder to be compliant with a newborn fawn. My name's Avery Moore. I'm the pen manager here at P-Bar Whitetails. So I was here last summer, I started my internship after I graduated with a degree in animal science at Texas Tech University. And a year later this summer, I am now currently the pen manager of P-Bar Whitetails. So it just goes to show how much you can learn and grow and progress in the deer industry and become a better person with more responsibilities and learn to manage the tasks that need to be managed and the day-to-day -day basis of taking care of wildlife. So the two-year-old pen has a bunch of big deer in there, and one in particular that needed some help. 
And so you take a look at him and think, why does he need help? Well, he's cockeyed, okay, he's hanging his head like this. And the reason why is he grew so fast and the antlers weigh so much that something had to be done to help him out. So this morning when we were, you know, feeding deer and checking pens, we noticed that one buck in that pen, he was a little, hanging his head a little low and he couldn't necessarily straighten his head all the way up. And so we had to knock him down to cut some of those tines off to make him more comfortable. We used a dart gun to sedate him to make him more comfortable. We gave him a bag of fluids and in those fluids we had vitamins in there as well as B12, B complex and also an antibiotic, LA200. This allowed him to, it flushes his system and keeps him hydrated as well when we cut his antlers. And when we cut his antlers we do tie off the portion with vet wrap and so it cuts off that blood supply. So this buck, he is sedated, and so when we are cutting his antlers, he won't feel that pain if there was some. And with that buck, it was his bottom drop tines that were uncomfortable and that were causing his head to lean. So that is why we chose those to cut rather than any of the top tines that he had. So we tied those off and we cut them and we reversed them and he woke up happy and healthy and he's a lot more comfortable and his head is a lot more straighter. Any deer farmer has to comply with the rules and regulations by either the Ag Department or Wildlife Department, and it's no different right here on P-Bar Whitetails. The compliance is something that starts from day one. Okay, so we had um, a fawn born this morning, and he's, he or she is laying over here. We're getting ready to tag it, tattoo it, microchip, collect DNA, and just check it out and make sure it's okay. So everything that we're about to do here keeps us compliant through the state of Texas and uh, Parks and Wildlife. We're required to do the tag, the microchip, the tattoo. Um, DNA is not required, but that's something that we do ourselves in order to uh, basically be able to sell the deer and know the lineage. So everything that we just completed is what's required of us to be compliant through the state of Texas uh, on, uh, on a fawn born in our pens. The DNA tissue sample is not, but it does allow us to identify deer and it provides a tissue sample where we can check for CWD markers. He's ready to go. He has his tag, his tattoo, his microchip, and we've given him everything that we think he needs to go live a happy life and be healthy. We're gonna go ahead and let him go back to his mom, wherever she's at. He's going to go look for. <laughs> Some other big changes that we've had here at P-Bar this year is has a lot to do with our help around the farm. Every year we hire some college interns and these girls have done tremendous for us this summer and I hope that their time here helps them later in their life and, and teaches them a lot about work ethic and basically the deer breeding lifestyle and to be conservationists at the same time. So when I drove up that hill through the driveway, um, coming into my interview, the first thing you see is all those yearling bucks. And for someone that didn't grow up hunting, didn't grow up around wildlife like this, that was one of the coolest things that I had seen is just sitting here mesmerized by these bucks with huge antlers and to think that they're only a year old. Then I get to walk out of my front door every day being a live-in intern and get to see all the does, all the fawns, all the bucks. You know, the sun sets right over the hill in front of where we live. So just getting to see how beautiful this place is kept, how great the pins are and how great all of our deer look um, is something that you can't replace. Jody and Joe are something different. One thing that always comes to mind is I used to get told this quote that was, don't fear success. And I think that they both really emphasize on that. I don't know if either of them have ever heard it, but just how they started this farm and the way they live life on a day-to-day -day basis, how they uh, interact with us, their decisions, everything I feel like follows that. And that's something that I always, ever since I heard it, I loved it and I really appreciate that they've given us this chance to be here. And not only when we're working, but also outside of work that they want to be sure that we are happy and having fun. Joe and Jody Phillips are two people that 
will never ask you to do something that they haven't done themselves already a thousand times. All right, so this is a pen of three-year-olds, huh? Yes. Okay. Holy smokes. Who is that guy right there with the tall brow tines? Look at him. That's Colt 45. Okay. All right, so tell me pedigree on him. Gunslinger, freeze frame, Jackie. Okay. So gunslinger. I mean, uh, that gunslinger is thrown, I don't know how many deer in the registry got a gunslinger. Oh, there's a bunch. But, but that deer right there is beautiful. How long are those brow tines? 12 inches? At least. I mean, they are, at least they're, they're long, and yeah. he has got an unbelievable frame on him. Who's that other deer right there? Boy, he's beautiful. So that's 810. That's Colt 45's wound brother. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Okay. She doesn't wow. miss. I mean, they do look similar, but Colt 45 is super sized. But I mean, so that doe doesn't miss. No. And so when I talked to y'all earlier about saying that you know, Jody wanted to build this whole herd on the doe side, that's, that's what I'm talking about, okay? So if somebody was to come over here and, and say, look, I really want a power deer, okay? The power deer is gonna come from the bottom side. Right. It's just gonna come from the it bottom is. side. And so Jody's been doing this long enough that she knows she knows what the doe's gonna produce. Right. So you know that you could you could take take any deer basically, put it in that, and you can rely that it's gonna be a big deer. I believe in most of our most of our genetics and especially Kate, which is his mother freeze frame Jackie. I believe yeah. in that line. I would like to have a hundred of them that look just go, like go the two right. of those. And so as, as people go to an auction, I will tell you this, they go to an auction and, and years ago it was like, people were like, who's that brunette gal over there? Who's that brunette gal over there? Okay, and now they know who that brunette gal is. I mean, I yeah. guarantee you, and the reason why is because you've got deer like this and you produce them over and over and over again. And I mean, my hat's off to you. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm just, just to tell you a little bit about her. Okay, Jody is, is kind of quiet. Okay, she's a, she's a bulldog. Okay, anybody <laughs> knows her knows she's a bulldog, but she's kind of quiet. And what happened? Uh, she's kind of in the last 12 months, she's kind of gotten pretty doggone vocal as far as leadership goes with the Texas Deer Association. And my hat is off to her because she has taken a leadership role and she takes it on the chin every single day for the deer breeders in the state of Texas. And a lot of deer breeders in, in, all over the country don't realize it, but my hat's off to you. Thank, Thank you. you for doing what you're doing. And, and folks, if y'all want more information about P-Bar Whitetails, Jody, give them a telephone number. It's 832-226-6127. And you can go online to their website too, and that is? It's P and then dash whitetails.com. And uh, get a hold of Jody if, you, if you're looking for the best of the best when it comes to whitetail genetics. There she is, give her a call. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you're watching online, uh, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to our channel and leave a comment, you know. Uh, uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can shoot me an email and I'll get back with you, I'll give you a word. And I want to tell you, thanks for watching. Thank you for having Thank us Thank you, again. appreciate right. it. Man, you got some great deer. Thank you. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.